Okay, so let's talk about the UV editor. I'm just going to go ahead and open it the way that I like to open it, which is to have it docked. So I like to just go ahead and panel UV texture editor, and I end up with this. I can open up that, that just a little bit more, just like that, so I can see all the tools. And the reason why I like to do this is because um, I have my other view nice and central. And this is if you have a single uh, actual monitor that you're working with. If you have multiple monitors, you can go ahead and instead have a separate one. So I could go ahead and say Windows UV Texture Editor, which will give me a floating one. Of course, what ends up happening here is this guy will either go blank or switch to something else. And you'll have this one UV Texture Editor here, and you can move that around. However, what I've watched people do is they'll do something like this. They'll move that off to the side, and they'll bring this up here, and they'll go to start working on it. And then when they go ahead and orbit, of course, it orbits off the side, and you can't access it. And then you go ahead and press something like F to focus on it and of course it's it's off to the side and you have to bring it over so uh, it's better if you have a single monitor on which to to work to actually just feel free to dock it so I just go ahead and do that so since this is not a multi monitor recording we'll just use a docked for now so I'm gonna go over the visibility options here first and then in a separate video we'll go through some of the tools um, I've got some stuff currently turned on. I'm just going to turn that off. So what we have, of course, first is just the grid. We have the grid that's available, and that's always on. Uh, we'll go through these ones in a moment. Let's just start over here on this side. We've got a nice little uh, nudge feature, which basically you go ahead and grab something here, and you click that, and it will nudge whatever that current selection is. So just whatever is currently selected off to the um, the value that's been assigned here so if I take this and I shift it over it's moving it one full unit now this view here we just pull back a little bit you'll see that there's four tiles and this is zero and this is one and one in U and V values respectively so uh, this is your main view area this is the darker one is actually where your texture will show up from edge to edge and if you're using something that supports multiple UV tiles, then of course you have multiple other tiles to work with. So of course this is where people may want to go ahead and lay out separate tiles. You can make use of something like this. You can also bring this down to smaller increments, so if you wanted to jump them by like 0 0.01 or whatever value, like a one-tenth of a UV space, you could go ahead and take those values and move them there. Another option that you have, of course, is using the arrow keys left and right. If I use the arrow key left, you'll notice that the entire shell, and we call these shells, not islands, um, the terminology in soft image is going to be islands, and here it's going to be shells. So it'll move the entire shell, even though I've only selected even just a single UV, it'll select the entire shell and shift it over. Now, uh, next in my nice little list here, we have this guy that cycles. So let me just pause for a second. So through the magic of time travel, we have quickly a little Im image applied to this. And let's say that I need to say scale this out or something like that. And this guy turns out to be in the wrong orientation. I've got in, you know, put him into place, but I realize suddenly that he's not actually in the correct orientation. Well, I can go ahead and cycle the UVs around without changing the actual shape of the object. So it will rotate around until I've got it uh, correct. Uh, another uh, wonderful aspect to this is that you can also view the actual aspect ratio of this larger size image to also give you as a, a kind of a point of reference for what you're actually doing with your UVs as well. So if you have a larger image, as I have here, which is not a square, I can go ahead and turn on my aspect ratio, which will respect the aspect ratio of whatever image I've currently got there. If there's no image or the image is a square or whatever, it's obviously just going to go back to a square. So that's your cycle. We also have over here, 
you just hover over these things you can see and this is basically toggling on copy paste for faces and UVs uh, to, to select copy and paste and we have some copy and paste features right here where we copy colors and UVs etc and we have then copy and paste UVs up here under this polygons option these guys basically tell you where any given UV is. So if we select this guy, you'll see it's at 0 and 1, so in U and V. And we have the ability to um, refresh these guys, if they haven't refreshed, or to lock them in their current values. So if I go ahead and uh, decide to move this, you notice it's not updating. If I turn that back off, it's not going to update until I were to let go. If I were to go ahead and say, let's zero, enter, zero, enter, um, it jumps back to where it was. So it's a way that I could remember where it was, try something, and then have it go back exactly to where it was. Although you could just press undo. Just had to pause for a second there. Cat decided that it wanted to help me make the video. So um, you could find a use for this, I'm sure. I haven't found a specific use that I need it for, but maybe you have one. Uh, the point is, this one will refresh it on demand, and this one will prevent it from refreshing as you go. So with it off, I go ahead and take the move that around. Um, you can refresh the new positions of those values. And uh, as you select a new item, that information will refresh automatically with that off. Next in line, we have uh, updating PST networks, but we'll talk about that in something separate. We've already done the aspect ratio. We have right here the um, force editor rebake and turning on off the ability to rebake or bake textures. So uh, those guys exist here. Uh, some true visibility options are right here where we have alpha channel and RGB viewing of the image, whatever the image may be turning on and off the actual image. And uh, if you note that moving the stuff around here, it's a little bit hard to see. We also have a half bright mode for these things to make things a bit more visible. We have the ability to go ahead and show what is in here. So um, in cases like, let's create a different situation here. And I were to grab let's say a face here and I will tear that off well you can see very clearly that there's a space missing there but if I go ahead and turn this off it's very difficult to tell that there is a polygon missing from there so this guy will tell you that either there's actually a polygon there or there isn't then of course we have let's just flip this guy we'll flip it sideways and you notice that it turns red. So if you see purple or red, you'll be able to tell that um, at least part of it or the whole thing is backwards, meaning that things like uh, wording will appear backwards on your objects or in some extreme cases, depending on what kind of render you're using or, or whatnot, things like normal maps and bump maps could appear inside out. So this is, this is an indication of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flip that back. Another feature, of course, is that it's semi-transparent, so you can tell whether or not things are overlapping as well. So you could tell for overlapping UVs whether or not they have multiple things sitting on top of each other, which again, in some cases, could be extremely difficult to tell otherwise. You could have those perfectly aligned and you have no idea that it's there except for, oh gee, it's a different color. So there you have it. Then we have our next little friend in line. Let me just come up with something a little bit better for showing you that one. Just gonna create a nice sphere here. And if you haven't noticed already, all the objects inside of Maya come with pre-built UVs. So every time you create a polygon object, it's gonna have UVs coming with it, which is again, something a little bit different from what you're, you're accustomed to in Soft Image. So uh, let's just switch from this guy to this guy. And you can see 
that these smaller guys have been stretched out and so they've gone to a blue color and these other guys have been compressed inwards and they've gone to a reddish color. So this basically tells you UV stretching and compression uh, in a nice easy way to, to view. And it's a, a live update so you can quickly see what's going on in both the viewport as well as in your main UV view here. One of the things that you should be aware of is that if I go ahead and compress this area here, of course the whole thing has turned red. Uh, a number of things can cause this to occur. You could do a different kind of UV projection or you could go ahead and do maybe an unfold or relax or anything that will cause this and it will not update until let's go to um, object mode here and I'm just going to go edit delete by type history and it's going to refresh its um, compression information so if you've got multiple objects let's say multiple pieces of a prop or a robot or a car or something like that where various different individual polygons will be unwrapped to a single tile this will be fairly useful because just having it compressed shouldn't mean that it should go to that red color and there's um, a distinct limit with regards to how far you can bring these things before they just become one single sort of color so as I bring this out beyond that point it's no longer usable so if I bring this out here I'm not getting any information that's new at all I, I can't see any difference it has to be within that smaller range and as I get down to a much smaller range again it goes to red and then it basically it's gone beyond that point there isn't any kind of adjustment for that so um, just remember you can grab it and delete history and delete by type Just a quick point there as I realized that um, it wasn't updating when I was doing the history. Uh, it's because it didn't have any actual new history on it. So I just did a, a quick change just by going ahead and just cutting and sewing back the same thing. And it can just be a single edge or something. Anything that will cause that will cause it to also refresh. And of course, then you have the option of, of deleting history. So something has to either create history or remove history in order for this thing to update. Okay, so next we have this automatic viewing of tiles and you can see we've got U2, V2, U2, V1, uh, U1, V1, and, and so on. So it's basically telling you where the tiles exist for multi-tile uh, unwraps. And you can tell in the viewport at the same time where these things are existing in space. At the same time, it also has this nice grid pattern that will tell you whether or not you're getting UV stretching or not, or any kind of warping or distortion that's that's occurring anywhere on your model. Another wonderful feature, if I go ahead and let's say I cut some of these edges. I don't know that they're cut unless, of course, I turn on my border edge, which will tell us where things have been cut inside of my um, movement of shells, etc. usually happens by physically cutting a section. So if I want to grab this and I wanted to move this island, aka shell, then I would go down here and create myself a new shell and move that off, and you can see that that works. I can't just simply grab it That one into funky mode there. Shell and then just grab it and move it, it's it's still attached. It's not gonna tear off. So um, you can go ahead and tell where things are cut or not cut through this. Next in line we have the uh, filtering of any given image that we have on our object. So if I were to play assign material there and See if we get anything off of this. You can see the texture filtering on and off, whether or not it gives me a blurry version or every pixel by pixel play. 
and then of course these other two that we've already looked at turning the image on and off or half bright mode. The final um, visibility related kind of thing that we're going to go through in this last video here is the display options. So isolate select, we can go ahead and turn on the view selected and you can do things like select a uh, selection of faces and view selected what comes on. Um, in addition to this, when you grab some UVs, once that thing's on, you can do stuff like this where it will isolate that given amount. I don't want those guys, remove them from that set. And then these are the only ones that are going to currently display themselves. So um, turning this off, if I want to add new things to that selection, add them to it, or remove them. And then of course, if you want to go ahead and basically clear everything, that will clear the entire set, and it goes there. So I'm just going to turn that back off again. It's already off. So there we have it. This is our options for visibility inside of the UV editor.